I am Ellie Pilcher. I am the marketing manager at Avon Harper Collins. I'm also a freelance journalist, a novelist, a blogger, a public speaker. I have many side hustles. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have another interview with an industry professional. Today we're looking at marketing and we have a marketing manager, Ellie Pilcher, who is working at Avon Books. Make sure you check out Ellie's book down below as well. So my day-to-day -day job is the marketing manager of Avon at HarperCollins UK. We're a publisher, we're a commercial publisher that specialises in crime, historical and women's fiction. We publish amazing authors like C.L. Taylor, Laura Jane Williams, Helen Fields. Brilliant publisher to work with and like I said, an imprint of HarperCollins UK. We have tons of meetings, um, so much so that we now have a meeting free week where we don't have any meetings because it gets too much. Um, but the meetings that I attend most regularly are things like our weekly editorial meeting where we discuss upcoming books that we're publishing, our weekly sales meetings where we have a look at the books that are succeeding or the ones that we really want to get up, um, get to higher heights. We have weekly meetings of external partners, I have weekly meetings of editors to discuss their books, I have weekly meetings of my line manager, I'm also a line manager so I have weekly meetings with my assistant and uh, yeah so lots and lots of <laughs> around the ring weekly meetings to discuss everything that we possibly can do um, but yeah but they're quite frequent and very useful. My favourite part of my job is actually seeing everything come together. Marketing is made up of lots of little things. So you have things like the cover of ill and you have advertising that goes on behind scenes, partnerships and external promotions and internal things that go on like giveaways and newsletters and e-blasts and you know all of these sorts of things. And for me, my favourite bit is seeing it all come together and hopefully succeed, obviously that's the aim. Um, but watching it all come together and a book to start flying and to start selling and to getting a hundred reviews that's that's the best it's the best high possible I think the one thing that most people don't know about my job is actually how closely but yet how different marketing and publicity are Marcoms which is the general term for the combination of the two um, it's kind of, it's an interesting one, it's hard to explain. Marketing and the basics of it. Marketing is paid for and publicity is free. So with marketing you pay for advertisements, you pay for promotions, you pay for partnerships for example, and publicity, journalists review your books for free, you get your features featured for free, uh, you have virtual events for free for the most part. Um, I mean that's not set in stone, P PR do pay for some things, for example a guest host uh, or for an event maybe they pay for the food and uh, marketing some things are free, sometimes a book club is free or a giveaway is free but it's um, yeah the, the thing that people don't know is how closely we work together but yet how separate we are um, in terms of what we do. I never talk to journalists ever, um, I rarely talk to external authors unless I am putting on an event when the PR person isn't available. For me, that's the thing that people don't understand the best, is the kind of the difference between marketing and publicity and how we work together, but how we work together and complement each other, but how we're actually completely different in what we do. When it comes to skills for my particular role, but also in general in publishing, I always refer to the three P's of publishing, uh, which for me are patience, perseverance, and pivotability. Um, you need to have patience because breaking into the publishing industry can be quite a struggle, particularly at the beginning, particularly now during lockdown as well. Um, but also there's patience within a role itself. So climbing the career ladder takes patience, working with authors, working with other co-workers, learning on the job, changes that can be made. You know, all of these things take patience and, um, you know, calm, so calm sensibility. And then perseverance, again, for all of the things I've mentioned, it can take a while. Um, also pushing through things in terms of when problems arise or uh, when you're burnt out, for example, or working from home or your internet's bad, any of those sorts of things. Perseverance is key, but it's also the same with books. You have to really persevere to market a book because it can take a day, it can take a year, a month, a, several years. You know, I've worked on books that have, from the moment that we've shown the cover, they've just taken off. And then I worked on other books where five years after they've been published, they take off. But, you know, it's all about perseverance. No, if we knew how to market a book and make it a bestseller, every book would be a bestseller. It's all learning on the job and going and learning as you go. And then finally, pivotability, uh, purely because the amount of things that can change in the publishing industry from the book cover, the book publishing date, 
the text, everything can change uh, and you do have to think on your feet and be able to pivot quite quickly. The one thing I really don't know about publishing, um, both from a marketing manager perspective, but also as a novelist, is I really do not know much about production, about the creation of books, about the distribution of books, for example. Um, I regularly have conversations with our production team when I'm putting together things like proofs and distributing proofs to um, reviewers and to journalists, but I don't actually know what they do or understand what they do. I'm always at a loss for words when they're talking to me and using phrases like B format and royal and um, spine width and baseboards. I don't, I don't get it unfortunately. So that's something that I really want to learn about because I feel like I've learned a lot uh, as a novelist about the editorial side and the right side and the agency side. And obviously as a marketing manager, more about the PR and to some extent the editorial and the sales, but I have yet to kind of really grasp production. So that's something I would really like to learn about. So the most challenging part of my job is actually pivoting. Um, it's a word I use a lot in marketing. It's a word I use a lot in my marketing workshops I run, um, purely because in marketing you are constantly doing things on the cuff and changing things because things like the publication date will change or the cover will be updated. Uh, the author will have a brainwave the night before publication, which you have to then implement. You might have a brainwave. Uh, the world might go into a global pandemic and, you know, everyone might go into lockdown and suddenly your big paperback campaign has to become a digital campaign. So you're constantly pivoting and constantly learning new things and trying new things and working with new companies. So it's never stagnant at all. And it's brilliant, but it's also challenging because you, you cannot sit still and um, it can be exhausting at times. And burnout, I think, is very common with, is within the marketing sphere of publishing um, purely because of the fast paced nature of marketing. The most common career paths after my role are, it's a mix really, it's um, obviously when you're in marketing, you tend to go down the marketing manager, senior marketing manager, marketing director, head of marketing, um, and all of those routes, but there, there are many different variations of those routes you can go down. You can be the head of brand marketing, for example, or the head of digital marketing. You can become uh, a campaigns manager where you run marketing and PR. Um, you can become a head of strategy or a strategy director where you, you kind of look at the overall arching way that the company is run or the brand is run and uh, marketing the brand and everything similar to brand marketing but more more working with um the uh, executives i'd say about the heads of that sort of thing but there are many different routes and also there's nothing saying that because you work in marketing you have to stay in marketing um, i've seen people that have worked in rights that have moved to editorial editorial managers that have moved into marketing marketing that have moved to pr pr that have moved to sales you know publishing it's very you can chop and change and you can move about because you're constantly learning what other people do by osmosis. Um, so it, it's not impossible to change at all. But the most common career path, I would say, after you get to marketing manager stage is usually senior marketing manager, head of marketing, marketing director, and then kind of overall marketing strategy director. The book that everyone should read this is really tough because um, there are so many books everyone should read purely because they're enjoyable books, but also there are books that are non-fiction that are good to read to benefit your career or just just to read in general. But I think the book that I would love everyone to read so I could discuss it with them because I think it's such a clever and important book is actually The Reader by Bernard Schlink. Um, and the reason I recommend this book is because uh, it's quite short. It's very easy to read, but it is incredibly harrowing. Um, the story itself follows a young man uh, from the end of the Second World War until about the 1980s, I believe, 19, maybe 1990s. And uh, he meets this woman who helps him when he's unwell one day and he returns to, the, to her house to say thank you. And unintentionally, a love affair begins. And um, she then disappears without a trace. And uh, years later, she, he rediscovers her whilst he's trained to be a lawyer. And uh, she is a, um, uh, on the stand for a crime that he is studying. And uh, it turns out he has evidence to basically help her. And uh, but the crime is so awful, it's um, regarding the Holocaust, that he doesn't know whether or not he should help her. And uh, it's it's all about forgiveness and morality and young love and innocence and lies and everything else. And it's so short and so clever. And um, yeah, and it's all about reading and the love of books and the love of stories as well. It's, it's really, there are so many layers to it. It's, um, it's a very impressive read and it's something that I would love everybody else to read as well. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hope you found it useful and make sure to check out Ellie's book down below.